everybody, it's Adam, and I'm here in San Diego at the 47th Annual STS Convention. Very fortunate to be uh, standing next to Dr. Lars Benson from the Cleveland Clinic, who's been in practice uh, for just about 30 years. And we're going to be answering a question that came in about aortic valve surgery, um, specific to aortic uh, regurgitation. And the question is, uh, from a surgeon's perspective, when you're going to treat aortic valve regurgitation in surgery, what are the, the key indicators that you can repair a valve versus going ahead and having to replace that valve? That's a very important question. In patients with aortic valve stenosis, we tried at one time to repair them, but most of them failed within a year. So it's really the patients with the leaky valves that we can repair. And it's particularly the patients with bicuspid valves, which 2% of the population have, that we can repair about 70% of them. So that's my repair rate for bicuspid valves. We usually do them through a small keyhole incision, a min-invasive incision, and we do that with less than a 1% risk of death. And then the other group of patients are the patients with three leaflets. Often it can be a congenital type of problem. And in those patients, we do the David reimplantation operation. And we've got a series now of about 290 patients, and that's a great operation for those patients. And based on the echo, uh, I can pretty much tell when I can repair the valve. And the repair rate for those patients is about 90%. And that's particularly important because these are young patients, as often the bicuspid valve, leaky valves. So it's a young patient, we can repair the valves, and the results are excellent for the uh, reimplantations. The durability is 96% at 10 years, in other words, a 4% failure rate, and you don't have to be on Coumadin and the blood thinners, in other words. And for the bicuspid valves, not quite as good, it's 91% freedom from another operation. But if you can get through those years when you're young without being on Coumadin, you can have an active lifestyle, and then later as you get older, we can put in a biological valve, and in the older person, the biological valves have a much better durability, and we're doing research now in putting a valve in a previously placed biological valve. So that's another option coming down the road. And by when you say valve and valve, it's a follow-up question. Valve and valve, are you talking about the transcatheter technologies that are, are coming out or something different? The, uh, that too. We've already done eight patients where we've done in a percutaneous valve, put another valve in a failing valve or not, one that's not working very well. Uh, but in the patients who've had previous open biological valves, we are working on putting in a new percutaneous valve, put it through the groin or through the left ventricular apex, so a small chest incision, and putting that in. And there's a new technology we're working on in a valve that we put in and it's designed so you can then it's put it open, but then you can go back and replace it percutaneously without opening the patient's chest again. So that's, wow. that's a new technology too. Wow. Well, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. And on behalf of all the patients, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing, the research, and uh, the pursuit of uh, healthy hearts. So, well, doctors, we enjoy taking care of patients, and that's what we're all doing this for, is to make sure the patients get better again. Well, there you have it. Again, Dr. Lars Svensson from the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, look forward to talking with you in the future. Trust me, my pleasure. Thanks.